Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sue Anderson, I'm with the Bark Park in Conneaut Lake and today we are doing another program for Armstrong entitled My Dog and Me and I asked uh, a very good friend of mine to do the program today because we're going to talk about something that all of us eventually go through if we have a dog and that is deciding on a dog, getting a puppy and some of those decisions. So with me today is Robin Peterson and she is with, if my uh, photographer will show you here, the Red Ball Dog Academy and we're going to ask her, first of all, about you. So tell us about yourself. Um, how did you get started in this? How did I get started? In training? Or in training? In training or with dogs uh, let's start with how did you get started in training? How did I get started in training? I owned that dog, the one that ate the carpet and chewed the cords and wouldn't come when I called it and would bite us and those types of things. So um, because I owned that dog, I needed to reach out to um, someone who could help me train um, the dog. So I called Attaboy Dog Obedience at the time and got started and ended up helping teach there. And that's how I got started. So you started with the dog at Attaboy. Mm -hmm. And then you became a, a helper with Jan, weren't uh -huh. you? Yes. OK. Yes. And then after you helped Jan for a while, what was your next step? After I helped Jan for a while, I actually took a step back for a year or two. Uh, my job, my real job, you know, the one that gave you the big paycheck, was Absolutely. in Edinburgh. So training on the side became an issue. So I was out for a couple years, and then I picked it back up again. Jan had moved. Um, I picked it back up again with Katera Peters and Groovy Pooch. And she was training at that time at the bar park. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I was with Katera for about three years, and then Katera decided um, to stop her training school. Uh, she still does private lessons, mm -hmm. but she no longer does the group classes. So um, my choice at that time was to either stop teaching or open the school up under my own entity, and that's what I did. So and it's called Red Ball Dog Academy. It is. And of course, the obvious question is, why'd you pick that name? <laughs> because my golden retrievers are obsessed with the red con ball, and it was the appropriate name. Um, it is a mixture of fun and learning, and the red ball to my dogs is the fun part of the learning. Okay, and most of your dogs over the years have been what breed? Golden Retrievers. Absolutely. <laughs> I've had five of them. Number okay. five is in the crate over there. And we're going to meet Sicily eventually? Yes, eventually. Okay. Yes, so my first one was a German Shepherd Husky mix. Oh, was wow. my very okay. first dog um, as an adult. Many dogs over the years as a child growing up, but... And now you've had Golden Retrievers. I've had Golden Retrievers, yes. They're my heart breed. I, I can't switch unless I remodel my home. And I don't think my husband would go for that. So, so. your house is um, filled with golden, ret uh, golden yes. retriever things. Yes, and the carpet and the furniture and everything match. And my house yes. is filled with Callaway stuff, yes. and my carpet and everything is based on the fact of what color my dog is and things, yes. all those yes. kind of crazy mm -hmm. decisions. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, where do you have your classes? Right here at Station 2 um, Fire Hall in Conneaut Lake. This is my training area. Um, so we meet here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and possibly Mondays coming up in September. And this is where we hold our training classes. Okay, so let's talk about it. So uh, let's pretend I'm the one who comes to you. Um, do people ever go to a trainer before they decide on a puppy, or do they just kind of do their own thing? <laughs> oh, okay. They, we I wish, wish they would. They're, they're a lot like I was. We go to the, people go to the trainers after they get the puppy, mm -hmm. not before. I really wish they would call before they get their puppy. You know, it's funny you say that. When I got Danny, my collie right. that I have now. I knew that I was going to someone who at the time had 17 Collie puppies. And you know who I took with me? I took Katera Peters. There you go. And she went with me and we stood and observed the dogs, checked them all out, mm -hmm. decided was I looking at a male or a female, what color was I looking at, and what type of a personality was I looking at. Yeah. So then whenever it got down to, I went back the second time, I kind of had an idea that it was between two or three. It was a lot easier for me than looking at 18, 18 dogs and saying, hmm, I wonder which one I should pick now. Yeah. Most breeders, if you are going to a breeder, now, now we know there's many ways to get a puppy. Okay. There's many ways to get a puppy. We, um, if you're going to a breeder, let's approach that way first. All right. If you're going to a breeder, the breeder should be able to match the best puppy out of that litter 
to you and your lifestyle. Uh, for example, that's if you get a dog from a breeder. If you get okay. a dog from a breeder, right. and I've heard many people say, "I don't want to go to somebody who doesn't let me pick out my puppy, and they pick out the puppy mm -hmm. for me." But from personal experience, let me just tell you this little story. Sicily is mine in many ways. I call her my Frankenstein because I created her. I own her mother. I picked out her father. She was born in my house. So I had a litter of puppies. There were eight of them, seven boys in Sicily. And I spent countless hours with those puppies. I knew their personalities. Mm -hmm. My people who were buying those puppies had to fill out applications that were very detailed about their lifestyle. And I matched the puppies to the lifestyle of the people. And there was in the towards the end a switch for me with puppies that I had already picked out for the people. Um, the one puppy who in the beginning was very laid back, very quiet, all of a sudden in the last three weeks became the most rambunctious, the fastest one in the litter, the one that never stopped. And I had him originally paired with a retired couple. Would not have been a good choice. Would not have been a good choice. So in the end, he went to the young couple that hike and bike and run marathons. Mm -hmm. um, I have not had an issue with any of my puppies and their families. It's been perfect matches. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm just the average person who wants to pick a dog. What am I going to do? How do I know what to pick? Where it, do I start? Where do you start? Okay. Um, where you don't start are uh, pet stores. Don't, don't start there. Um, they all look cute in a pet store. Oh, they look adorable. I can't walk down that hallway. I, I, I can't even go down the hallway no, of the pet it. store. I, I can't do it. Mm -mm. Um, don't go there. Um, please do not do the flea market with the box of puppies. Don't, don't do that because that's impulse. That's impulse. They're, they're adorable. They're cute. And you pick up that puppy and you take it home and you're not prepared for that puppy. So the first night right off the bat, you have disaster. Um, you really need to prepare for that puppy. So impulse puppies are not a good thing. Okay, what should I start? Where should I start? Um, right here. Something like this. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what type of dog do you want? What type of dog is best for your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Are you a busy person? Are you a laid back person? What do you do? How many hours of the day do you work? Um, where I live? Where you live. Do you have a big yard? Do you have a small yard? You don't want a dog that needs lots and lots of exercise if you don't have a place for that dog to exercise. You don't want a dog that's a couch potato if you like to go for hikes and walks and bike and do those things and, and you want your dog to participate mm -hmm. with you. Um, so what you need to do, whether you are rescuing a dog from a humane society or a shelter, or and it's a mixed breed, or you're buying a purebred. Mm -hmm. You want to research the breed or breeds that are in the mix. Go on, Google it. We Google everything. So Google the breed or breeds. Make sure you like the adult dog, not just the puppy. Find out what the adult dog is all about. Mm -hmm. Find out all of the bad things about the dog and make sure that you can live with that. Because if you can't, you don't want it. What's an example of a bad thing? Okay, for me, mm -hmm. I thought at one point, I don't know why I thought this, but at one point I thought I wanted to break away from Goldens. And I wanted a dog that was different, a dog that you don't see a lot of. So I thought I wanted a Clumber Spaniel. They're low to the ground, they're very heavy boned, they're, they're just a really neat looking dog. So I went on AKC site, didn't really see anything on there that turned me off, read about them in a book, didn't see anything on there that turned me off. So then I went to the Clumber Spaniel site. And the breed sites are kind of the best sites to go to because mm -hmm. they'll try to talk you out of getting their breed because they don't want anybody to have their breed that's not going to treasure their breed and take care of their breed. You, as a golden person, I don't want to see my dog in a shelter. I don't want to see my breed on, on a Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. So, um, so they're very protective of their breeds. 
So I went on the breed site and this is what it told me. Go into your living room and look around. Now sit down and close your eyes and picture your living room. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. And it says, now close your eyes and envision drool dripping off your curtains. And I went, Bleh! no, not for me. Not for me. Not for me. No, can't you do and it. I don't like that. No, I don't like drool. No, no. no. So I, something I, like I deal that's with a big drool, issue. but I don't want to live with drool. Right. So you got to decide yeah. that stuff. Yes. Yes. And it's a simple little thing. I didn't know they drooled like that. Well, I always talk about the fact when every people, you know, we're always, you and I visit with the therapy dogs a lot and people say, make a comment about Danny and Danny has a rather heavy coat, not real heavy, but a rather heavy coat. Uh, he's a collie and some of you know that, but um, people say, I say, well, you have to like, you have to like dog hair because you're going to live with it. Oh, yeah. It's on my, my being. It's yeah. in my house. It's everywhere. And I always give the example. I say, here's how I eat a hot dog. Mm, dog hair. Yeah. It's in my food. It's yeah every place and I sweep a lot I've got the best sweepers and everything but you have to know that if you're getting that breed you're gonna live with dog hair I have two that don't shed and I have two that do so that's an example you better know what you're getting into whenever you get a certain uh, certain breed I have the same issue mm -hmm. um, at, later when we see Sicily I at the moment I call her my naked mole rat um, she's in the stage of her life, she's an intact female, where she has lost her complete coat and is getting her adult coat right now. So, um, yeah, she looks pretty naked at the moment. But um, I tell everybody, you have to like, if you want a golden retriever, you have to know that you will never go anywhere by yourself, not even to the bathroom. They are Velcro dogs, they follow you mm -hmm, everywhere, mm -hmm. and you have to have a really good relationship with your vacuum cleaner. I said to somebody, we were talking about uh, Danny again, and I said, oh, my God. You know, he goes to the nursing homes in those places, and he sleeps. People <laughs> laugh at that because he's always laying down sleeping. And I say, come to my house. He runs and he barks. And somebody who I didn't even know, and they turned to me and they said, if you didn't want a dog that was going to run and bark, why did you get, get a herding a dog? dog? That's right. He's a herding because dog. Because that's what that's herding what dogs does. do. And yes. I've had colleagues that never did it as much as he's obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would not have thought of necessarily. So uh, it's not going to keep me from getting a collie, of course. But you have to know what you're getting into yeah. with certain breeds. They put their nose down. I have a hunting dog. They mm -hmm. put their nose, you know, everybody thinks goldens, family dogs, kids, whatever. True, but they are hunting dogs by instinct. Their nose goes on a scent and it doesn't come back up. You well, really have to work that. How about the beagle? Oh, yeah. Get well, a beagle that, and it gets one smell and no matter how much right. you've trained him, yep. that dog's gone. Yep. You better have a fenced in mm -hmm. yard and you better mm -hmm. be able to control it. So yeah. there's certain things like that you have to really mm -hmm. watch with certain yes. breeds. Yes, yes. Siberian Huskies should not be off leash ever. That's they, probably true. They were bred to run. And if you have a fence for them, it better be at least eight feet tall. We've uh, seen some of them almost go over some of ours at the bark park. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. a huge thing, too, is, is just how they act. We always laugh, and you and I have talked about this. The person who gets the border collie, and I don't want to offend anybody, but if you have a border collie and you live in an apartment, that probably isn't a very good combination because a border collie needs a job. Yes. And they want to be outside and they want to run and they want to do and they mm -hmm. just don't sit down. They're not a couch potato. Yeah, they're a all. working dog. If you if you get a resource book um, like this one, and this one is very, very old, but but the dogs are categorized by what they're for. Working dogs, hounds, sporting dogs. It is what they're bred to do. And you can train a dog but they are who they are, mm -hmm. and they are bred to do certain things. And that is very important when you're picking out a dog. What is your breed made to do? Because they are who they are. Well, something else we've talked about, too, is not only looking at a book, but if you see certain dogs in certain places in a control situation that are standing there with their owner, it certainly doesn't hurt to go up to them and say, what are some things about this dog that you like? Why did you pick that dog? At the bark park, I inevitably, someone will come in with a dog and I'll say, you know, I gotta really ask you a question. What in God's name did you pick that breed for? <laughs> and I go, that's like the last breed in the world I would pick. You know, it might be something very common. I'll say, what, what possessed you to get that dog? Mm -hmm. And many times it's, well, I saw the dog at the pet store and I picked it up and that stuff, but that's never a good combination. You really, as you see, need to really look into these dogs and know what you're getting. Do you know what I tell my puppy people? No, but I, I probably missed that part. What was it? <laughs> when, when, when puppy class starts and everybody's here with their puppies and they're eight weeks old and they are the cutest things in the world and it's so hard for them to even look at their puppy and say, uh-uh, 
because they're that cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God made them that cute so we don't kill them because they are destructive little beings at yes. that age. Yes. And, and so that's where the impulse, the impulse buying or the impulse free puppy is so hard because they are so stick and cute. And a lot of dogs that aren't matched perfectly and aren't the ones that you should have gotten, where do they sometimes end up? In the shelter. In the shelters. And yeah. that's the sad part about this. Right. If you don't take the time to learn about the dog, educate yourself, do everything you need to do when you get the puppy, you know, that dog gets to be seven, eight months of age and you think you're going to kill yourself if you don't mm -hmm. kill the dog. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? You pick it up and take it to the shelter. Right. And that's a shame. Right. So for my breed, why do Goldens end up in shelters? Because people will say, I didn't know they were going to get that big. I didn't know they needed that much exercise. I didn't know they shed that much. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know they would follow me everywhere I go. I can't stand it. That tells me you didn't do your research mm -hmm. before you got the dog. Okay, so I've done my research. I know what I'm looking for. I go in the uh, Pittsburgh paper because there's going to be a lot of choices in there. If there's a certain breed that I like, mm -hmm. sometimes there'll be some good breeders down there. Um, Interesting story, one time I looked in the Pittsburgh paper for a particular breed and I saw five different breeds had exactly the same telephone number. That's never a good sign. It was a, probably a pretty good idea that this was some form, maybe in a minor form of a puppy mill, because one house had five different breeds that they were promoting. Yeah. And that happens too. Okay, so I go and I go over and I'm, I'm going to look someplace. What do I look for whenever I go to look for this puppy? Anything in particular? Uh, you want to look for how the puppy acts. Are you, you're looking at the litter of puppy, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Okay. You don't want the one that's hiding behind the tree or hiding behind the chair and doesn't want to come out and greet you and doesn't want to interact with you. Mm -hmm. You don't want that one. That one is scared to death to begin with. Um, should I see the mother and father? If possible, yes. What if the people refuse to let me see the uh, mother and father? Um, I would say thank you very much for your time and mm -hmm. I would go down the road and find something else. You should at least be able to see the mother. The, exactly. the stud she may be, be living right. out of the country or right. out of the state, right. but you should be able to right. see the mother. They, they don't even pay child support. No, the they studs, don't do anything. No. They're just, mm -mm. That's it one time. No, they take so. our money and that's it. Yeah, they don't even, um, they don't even donate Clorox wipes to us. No, <laughs> they're just done. So yeah. you should see the mother and father. You can see the dogs, watch how they interact and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, I see this cute puppy, and you know what the lady said to me? That, well, let's just pretend. And she said, you can have that dog right there. I said, well, that dog looks a little bit young to me. How old is that dog? And she says, well, that dog's only about six and a half, seven weeks old. Mm. Is that a red flag? Yes. Is it against is it, the law Yes. for anyone to sell a dog that's under what age? It is against the law in the state of Pennsylvania to buy or it, sell a puppy. It is against the law to sell a puppy that is under eight weeks of age. And they do. And they do it all the time. Why? What's so, what's so wrong about that? I will tell you why they do it. I will tell you from experience why they do it. Because when those puppies hit about six weeks of age, mother dog is done with them. So now they're yours. So now they're yours. And they are a heck of a lot of work. The mother dog is no longer nursing them. Mm -hmm. They're big enough to eat solid food. Um, they bite her. They make her mad. And she usually doesn't want too much to do with them unless you were my Ella. She didn't care. Um, and they're a lot of work. So it, people think, oh, now that the mother's not nursing them, they don't need to be here anymore. Well, why should they, why should they stay till eight weeks? Because there is development um, that happens within the litter those last two to three weeks. Um, and one of the biggest things that they learn is bite inhibition, which means biting hurts. Mm -hmm. because they chase each other and they play and they roll each other and they bite each other. And when a puppy gets bitten, it screams. It yipes. And mm -hmm. it makes the other puppy jump back and look at it and wonder what that was about until it gets bit. And then it realizes that it hurts. Mm -hmm. When you bring a puppy home younger than eight weeks, remember that first dog I told you about? <laughs> Yeah, that was me. Uh -huh. She was not even six weeks old when I brought her Oh, that's her terrible. Home. It was awful, but I didn't know. Mm -mm. Um, I went to look at this litter of puppies um, and to the people's half credit, now that I know more than I know, knew then, um, she, 
they didn't want me to take her home that week. They wanted me to come get her the next week, which still would have been under eight weeks old. But I had that week off of work, so I convinced them to let me take her. Mm -hmm. um, she was the runt of the litter, and she was number 12. There were 12 puppies. And all of the puppies were eating solid food, but she couldn't. She was that tiny. Um, she barely weighed three and a half pounds when oh I brought Lord. her home. She was really And she tiny. was a? A golden. A golden. Yes, so um, I stopped off at, um, um, it was when Meadville Mall was still here, and I went into Thrift Drugs and I bought Similac baby formula mm -hmm. and um, Iams dog food, puppy food, and I took it home and put it in a blender and made a mash, and that's what I fed her. Wow. Yeah, so um, again, I learned by my mistakes. And um, she, she bit terribly. She would bite until she drew blood as a puppy mouthing because she didn't stay with that litter. How hard is it to make a puppy not bite? I mean, that's one of the things I hear oh, all the time from people that want, need to go to puppy school. Yeah. We saw that one person that you and I remember seeing, and we talked to this gentleman <laughs> at one of the facilities, and I said, oh my God, you look like you've been to war, and he had nothing but little tiny scabs all over the back of his hands because and up, their arms and up his arms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you get past that? It's a stage and it goes away, um, but but you have to do something about it. Um, so our rule, my rule in my house, is no puppy teeth on human skin. Ever. Ever. And you have to work that. You have to you have to be consistent. You have to have time. So if you don't have time, don't get a puppy. Don't get a puppy. It takes an awful lot it of time. It takes an awful lot of time. When humans have babies, what do we do? We prepare for it. We have baby showers. We fix a nursery. We prepare our house for it. We take time off of work for the arrival of the baby. When you're walking through a flea market and there's a box of adorable, cute little puppies that are free, Whoa, it's a free puppy. And free I, to a good home. Free to a good home. They even ask where you lived or what your house was no, like. They no, just, they just said, oh, you look like a nice lady here. Have this puppy. And off you go. Um, there, there's none of that. There's no, there's no preparation for that puppy whatsoever. And you just go. So um, that, that's just a bad scenario all the way around. Okay, so I picked up the puppy. I waited eight weeks. Good. I waited and I... Um, and you prepared for that puppy to come home? Well, no, not quite. I'm starting to think about it. What are some okay. of the things... Let's say I'm at seven and a half weeks. I'm picking up the puppy next week. Okay. What in God's name do I need? All right. Um, well, some people think all you need is a puppy and a leash and a collar and food. That'll do it? No. Oh. No. I like those for Puppy, leash, yeah. collar... And food. Food. That yeah. seems pretty easy, but that's not it, is no, it? No, no. And the, and the leash and the food are always fun, you know, or the leash and the collar are always fun. But the food's important. Okay, what the are we looking for? The food's really important. Um, you need to find out what the breeder's feeding. Um, what What is the breeder feeding that puppy? Because... What if I don't like it? You can change it later. Oh, okay. Okay, but you need to start out on that. So you need to find out what the puppy is used to eating. Because that little puppy is going to be horribly stressed. You don't think so because you're going to cuddle it and you're going to love on it and you're going to think the puppy is just so happy to have you as its home. I'm going to let it sleep on the bed and, right away. Oh, no, you're not. I oh, will squirt you. Can't do that either? No, okay. that's just a really bad All thing. All right, that's a bad idea. So you need to find out what the person is feeding where you're getting okay. your puppy and get some of it. Have it there. And if you don't like it, then you get what you want to feed and you slowly switch it over. Oh, in other words, I can't feed my dog this on Monday and then say, I don't like that food. I'm gonna start this on Tuesday? Mm. No. no. How long should it take me, generally even with any dog, to make a switch from food A to food B? At least two weeks. I used to say, I think, isn't it usually you give them the food here and then you give them the food here and this is seven-eighths of the old food and one-eighth or so of the and new, and then slow, it's a quarter yes, and a half yes. and a half, and it yes. keeps on going and going and going to you. slowly, 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 yeah. yeah. People don't yeah. realize, I think that's one of the biggest reasons people say my dog gets sick all the time, and I can't, fi I can't find the food that works. 
So I keep on changing the food. Yeah, I bet you did. And I bet you kept on changing it every really, couple really days. Really, really fast and it can't no adjust wonder. to it. No, yeah. its stomach is yeah. just in turmoil yeah. because people are doing that. Yeah. Um, so you want to do that slow. So okay. you need the food. Okay, I got the so food. So make sure you have the food. And then one of the most important things that you need is a crate. I don't like to crate dogs. Why? Because that's confining. I'm just gonna let them, I'm just gonna let them run anywhere in my house. Mm -hmm. So if you had a toddler in your house, because we can't say a newborn, because newborns don't move. Right. Puppies move. If you had a toddler in your house, you would just let the toddler in your house, and you would go to work and leave the toddler in your house. No, I can't do that. Why? Well, because they might get in trouble. They might do something. They might get into something. Might get into right. something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to push so, for a crate. So you need a crate. Yeah, so you need a crate. So if well, let's you, you want to see this crate. Let's um, bring it up here on the table so they can all get a good sure, look at this. Sure, we can do that. We can this put is, this right uh, up there. This is the metal crate. This is a collapsible, right? This is a collapsible crate. Um, this, this. Where can you get them? Um, I know Tractor Supply has them. Yeah, you can get or you can get them online. Oh, we're having a real crisis here. Okay, no, we got it's it. just bigger than... I don't want to get on your oh, yeah, nose. Okay, okay yeah. we're good. Okay. So, this is a precision crate. I like these crates because they're heavy duty. Um, it does fold down. This crate happens to have a door on the side mm -hmm. and a door on the end. Um, so Sue's gonna, yeah, I'm going well, to try it's, to. It's, there we go. Yeah, but it's not gonna, there. So no. it has both, okay? So this, this is the crate that I use in my car. I use this back in my cargo area because it can go in this way and Cicely can get in and out or Ella through here. This crate, the reason I brought this crate to show is because it comes with a divider. So you need a crate for your puppy big enough for your puppy to stand up, turn around, and lie back down again. Oh, I want my puppy to have this. My puppy needs to stretch out, needs all this room, no? Okay, if you do that, then your puppy is going to pee and poop in here. Oh, okay. So the okay. small dogs don't normally don't pee and poop they where they sleep. Do normally, they? will not pee and poop okay. where they sleep. So, if you want to save money, get a crate big enough for your dog. Buy one that comes with a divider, because you can put the divider in and hook it wherever, and move it as you need to move it. Okay. Okay. And then you can change the size of your crate as your puppy grows. And then you do not need to buy another crate. That's a good idea. Okay. So now, when I bring Cicely out later to show you um, a couple things, you will say that crate looks a little small for your dog. It's not, it's not the crate that I leave her in when I go away at home. I have a much bigger one for that. But this is my car crate. Well, what are we okay, putting in so, the bottom of the crate okay. for the puppy? Um, just nothing. How about a towel? And you want them to eat it? No, but I don't want them to be on that plastic. That plastic looks like it's probably cold. It, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, I still, uh... So here's what you do. Until you know that your puppy does not ingest things. Oh, All puppies right? ingest. That's okay. true. Okay. So Cicely's mother loved soft toys. Favorite thing to play with was a, was a stuffed toy. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mind if my dog kills a toy because that's fun for them, but she ate it. She would eat them. Not that sure. is an expensive vet bill. So she, w she couldn't have a, a soft toy until she was three, unsupervised. Oh, I was like, you mean a soft yes, toy with stuffing? Okay, like a plush right. toy, okay? Right. So, but not, not one of those ones that people buy that those skinnies either because they've got no. No, that's still soft. She would still, still, soft. She okay. would still eat that. Right. The reason these are on this crate is because it rattles in my car and I can't stand that noise. So this, this stops them. You would not put these on your crate if your puppy was in here because, because your puppy would pull it through and it would eat them. But this is my car crate and it rattles when I'm driving and it drives me crazy. So that's why these are on here. All right. So, so you get the crate. You're going to get your crate. First night that your puppy's in the crate, they're going to whine and fuss. They're, your puppy has just been taken away from its mother, its litter mates, and it's now in a new home. And it's stressed and it's scared. So you're going to put the puppy in the crate. If your breeder's been good, your breeder's already been working crate work. Okay? If, if your breeder's been good. Um, and they've already been working crate work, so it should not be totally strange. Crate work. You mean you have to worry about 
Can't you just throw them in? No, you don't want to throw them in. Oh, you, you have to go through there. some stages here. So if your puppy is not familiar with a crate, <clears throat> what I tell people to do is feed them in their crate. Leave the door open, feed them in their crate, call them out. This becomes their bedroom. This becomes their favorite place to be. Dogs are denning animals. This is theirs. I tell people who have children or have company come over, if the puppy's in the crate, off limits. You don't get to play with it. Oh, the kids can't go and stick their fingers in and do all this stuff. No, no, okay, no. no. Gotcha. Leave them be. Um, kids love to play in crates, but not when the puppy's in there, okay? okay? So you bring your puppy home. You're going to put your puppy in the crate to sleep. It's going to fuss. It's going to cry the first night. It will happen because the puppy's scared. The worst thing you can do is go, oh, you poor little puppy. You come sleep with me. Sleep in my bed with me. No. No. Okay. Because this is what will happen. Either it's going to pee or poop on your bed. Or when you fall asleep, it's going to get off your bed and pee or poop in your house or chew something up or get into something. This crate is going to keep your dog safe. safe. It's going to keep your dog from getting into something that could kill them. It's going to keep your dog from getting into something that's going to make you want to kill them. Okay? So mm -hmm. this is going to keep them safe. Now. Okay, so we're going to buy a crate for the dog. You're going to buy it. You're going to get a crate. And you're going to get the you food. Can... You're going to get the crate. You can get different crates as your dog grows, but get one that's got a divider in it so you only have to buy sure. one, okay? And then it can move. As your puppy gets bigger, you move the divider back. As your puppy matures, you can start putting a towel in there. You can put, you can put a mat in there. You can give it toys. Now, this is something that a lot of breeders send their puppies home on, not for adult dogs. Little tiny puppies, pig ear chew. The first night when your puppy, you put your puppy in the crate, give them a pig ear to chew on. They'll chew on it and chew on it and chew on it and they'll fall asleep. Wait, wait, what do you mean not for an adult dog? I, I don't give them to adult dogs because adult dogs that have really strong jaws the whole thing. can break off pieces and it can get stuck. Okay. But for puppies, mm -hmm. for little tiny puppies that don't have that jaw strength, that's fine. Big dogs will break pieces off. They don't chew it. They swallow it. So you don't want that to happen. So you just want little tiny puppies. When they get older, this is not a good thing. Can we put the crate in the bedroom? Yes. Can we put the crate, or should we put the crate in a room all by itself and turn off the lights and you all that stuff? You can do Whatever it works. either or. You can do it either or. Okay. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with putting the crate in, your, in the bedroom. There's nothing wrong with putting the crate in a room away from your bedroom. Now, they're babies. You're gonna have to get up in the middle of the night to potty them until they're just a little bit older. Um, some puppies can go longer. As they get older, they can go longer. Can I, should I pick up the water at all? I would not put water in the crate. Should I not so, let them have anything to drink maybe after nine o'clock at night or so? I've never, never restricted mine, okay. but a lot of people do. Yes, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you offer it as soon as they get up in the morning. Because right. if you think about it, children go to bed at nine o'clock. We go to bed at nine o'clock. We don't drink until the next morning. They don't need to do that. Right. Um, Let's so, put this down on the, okay. on the floor. Ready? Um, what about what else? Can I, I can get this kind of crate, or there other crates. This is probably the best though for puppies. This the is metal one. this is the best for puppies. Yeah, they make very um, very kennels that are the plastic crates. You can use those. The type of crate that you absolutely do not want to get for a puppy, a canvas crate. Why? <laughs> because they because will, they will chew they it. They will eat it. They will chew it. When they're older, that's fine, but not, but not for a puppy. What was the other name that you just said for a crate? A very a very kennel. They're the plastic ones. The one that have um, they're solid like, and they've got a grate on the front and a grate on the yeah, back. Yeah. 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 But they are, if I, I hope I'm not wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong, they say of all the crates that you can ever, if you transport dogs or have dogs, a lot of people believe that they really are the safest. That they, the plastic crates in your car are safer because they, will not, they, they can absorb some of the right. impact where this will not. That's the same type of crate that bend. you can uh, fly a dog with. Too. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. What are they called again? So, very kennels. Very. V V A R I, I think. Okay. All v -A -R -I. right. V A R I. So we've got, so now let's see. I bought, I, I've got the food. I've got the kennel. I, got, I mean, I got the crate. I got the food. What else do I need? A leash? A leash. 
Yes, Pennsylvania has leash laws. Did you know that? No, they do not. Yes, they do. It is illegal to have your dog out off leash. Outside? Yes. Hmm. You mean people shouldn't be letting their dogs just run loose anywhere they want? Exactly. If, um, if I'm walking down the street and my dog's on a leash, and I walk past your house and your dog is not on a leash in your own yard, mm -hmm. and your dog comes down through the yard and onto the street and goes after my dog, who's responsible? Who, what dog is at fault? The dog that came out of the yard and went after Absolutely. your dog. And some yes. people think, no, 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 that dog was, you right. know, whatever, but no, that's true. Yeah. And you should have your dog on a leash all the time. Yes. But my yes. dog listens all the time. Okay, but that you're still breaking the law. I always say the right temptation hasn't come along. Right. I always, you know, people, and we always have this at the bark park. Does your dog come when it's called? And they look at me. I say, no. Does your dog come every time? Well, most of the time. I said, most of the time is not good enough. It's got to be every time, and I've yet to find the one. I was, in fact, I was there yesterday, and I had my dogs in my fenced-in area, and a gentleman came up with a breed, and I won't tell you what breed it was, and this dog is supposed to be very well-trained. And the gentleman went in to use the portadron, and the dog took off towards my house. Now, I would never have thought. I thought that dog was so well under control, listening to that guy constantly. The right temptation. Yeah, yeah. So, you just got to have the leash. You really do. Yes. And what what length leash for a puppy? Um, it, it not oh, well. Um, it the, the, no big deal on e, you know four six. I wouldn't go longer than that, and I'm not a fan of flexi leads. What's a flexi lead? Uh, those those retractable ones that go out and come back in. Yeah, we don't yeah, we don't allow don't, anybody to use those. Yeah, I don't like them at all. I don't either. Yeah. So. Okay, so I've got the leash. What about the collar? Should I put a choke on my puppy? No. Nope. Oh. No, no. You should not put a choke collar on any dog that's under six months of age. So I should just get a flat collar. Get a simple flat, flat collar. collar. Mm -hmm. Flat collar, maybe nice if it was a matching leash and collar. Oh, yes. So that's the fun part of very, having a puppy. Very dressy. You know? Yeah, that's you can true. do that. There's, so there's we've got the leash, parts. we've got the food, we've got the crate. That's all we need? Um, dish, food, dish, yeah. food, crate, collar. We're pretty good. And maybe a toy. Maybe a toy. Okay, so let's, let's do a, a couple toys. And, okay. Um, okay, so chew toys. If your puppy has nice things to chew, then it means less chewing on your things. Okay? Okay. All right, so the other thing about a crate, people, when they go to work, say, um, well, I don't use a crate, I just put my dog in a room. In the bathroom, because they the can't bathroom. do any damage there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you come home and there's no baseboard and there's no walls and there's no, there's no whatever, because they've, they've chewed all of those things. All right, so some toys that are good chew toys. Um, these are Benabones. They come in two different... Benabones? They're called Benabones. They I've come never in, seen one of those. They, they come in two different shapes. Um, they're a lot like a Nylabone. My dogs like them. And again, they're, they're to be chewed on. When they start getting pieces, it's time to throw them away. Okay? Um, but they're a good chew. They're good and hard and they can really chew on them. They're put a lot the, like a Nylabone. Put them in the refrigerator? You could. Um, I don't think they hold the cold real long. Though. Not very good. Okay. Because yeah. sometimes yeah. puppies like that because their right. gums are right. chewing everything in sight. Yeah. So these are these are good. They come in all different flavors, and I've left them in the thing so that people can see what it looks like. What are these called? Benabones. Benabones. Yeah. Hmm. So there's those. Um, okay. This is an all-time favorite toy of my dogs. This is called a Jack. It's made by Premier. Um, it comes with these little rawhide pressed rawhide, I'm not a fan of rawhide, but this pressed stuff falls apart, um, that this unscrews and you put the discs in here. And, um, and again, this is like a Nylabone um, material, so they chew on this and they try to get these pieces out. And it keeps them busy. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that toy. Um, deer antlers um, are, some people like them, some people don't. I don't have issues with them. My dogs them. do not have issues with them. Some people say their dogs get slivers off of them. So again, there is no toy that is made that is indestructible. There is no toy that is made that is perfectly safe. You have to monitor. 
you have to supervise. You can't just not look at things. Um, so if your dog has an antler and you start seeing that they're getting slivers off of it, throw it away. Um, but antlers are good for them to chew on. A lot of people with the uh, rawhides, we talked about that, you need to watch with a lot of the toys. First of all, how many small pieces do they have that can come off? Right. And the other thing is, Where's where it made? is it made? Mm -hmm. Make and, sure it's made in the United States. Right, made in the United States. Check that whenever you go into any of those um, toy stores or you go into any place such as uh, Dollar Bargain and Walmart and Tractor mm -hmm. Supply and all those places. They'll bring anything in because yes. they know anybody will buy anything. But take my word for it, you make sure that you check the where that particular rawhide or bones were made. Right. And right. make sure, it, hopefully, you're going to get one that says made in the USA. Right. Because they are not, those countries are not held to the same standards that mm -hmm. we are held to and they cure their stuff in formaldehyde and other things that are not safe for our dogs. Um, my favorite, raw bone. Um, this raw bone no longer has meat on it, um, but the bone is good, it's solid, and you can stuff it with peanut butter, you can stuff it with carrots, you can stuff it with those things. Um, now, the warning that comes with a raw bone is this. If your dog is going to resource guard anything, they will resource guard a, a raw bone. And when you give your dog a raw bone, you must give it to them, let them have it for five or 10 minutes, and then take it away. Give it to them the next day for five or 10 minutes, then take it away. Because it has meat left on the outside of it and it's filled with marrow, and they love the marrow. Too fast, too much can make them sick. Once they've, in, once they've eaten a raw bone and sucked all that stuff out of there, I've never had an issue again, and I can just let them have it until it's gone. Where do you get this? You can get them from, um, you can order them from Giant Eagle, or you can get them from the local um, butcher shops. Right. You just just call them up and say, "Hey, do you have dog bones?" And make sure they they'll custom cut them for you. Yes, they will. Make sure they cut them to the size of your dog. Um, I don't want small ones. I I want mine to be this big. It's stuck in the throat. Yeah, they can they can. Mm -hmm. um, and I and if they're too small, I've seen dogs get them caught. Uh, teeth like this. Right, right across there uh -huh. at the bottom. And, then, I have and then you have to, so make sure that they're big enough. Um, and then you can stuff them with things um, and throw them in the freezer. But if you cook them, then you weaken the bone. So if you keep it raw, the bone stays stronger. But again, I have, my grand dog has the strongest jaws I've ever seen in, in, in a non bully breed mm -hmm. and I have to watch her because it doesn't take her long to start getting pieces off of things like this and then I have to take them away. What is resource guarding? Resource guarding is when your dog has something and says your dog says it's mine and you can't have it and if you try to take it I'm going to raise my lip growl at you and try to bite you. What do I do then? Well what you do is first off you safety first so you have to figure out how to get that away from them without reaching your hand in there and getting bit. And what works, an alternative? Uh, an alternative. Yeah. Um, I have a cookie. Look, I have this cookie. Or you lure them away from it, and as soon as they're away from it, you get rid of it. And then you get help to work through I that. sometimes have uh, four rawhide things or four bones at one time, and everybody has one. Then one will finally say, well, I think I'm done with that one. I think I like that one over there. And that's whenever we start having our issues. So I run around with the treats and say, how about a treat? Put your mouth on the treat, and I grab the that's bone. Right. They all go up on top trade. of the refrigerator. Yes, sure, trade. it's always a trade. Always trade. Always mm -hmm. trade. Just safety first and make sure there are no children around. And that's why I issue that warning with raw bones. Because if they're going to resource guard anything, they will resource guard a, a bone. Hmm. Over a toy or, or anything else, they will resource guard a bone because it's that high value. It is really, really that high value. Okay, a couple other toys. This is made by Kong, it's called an Orbit. Um, in these holes right here, um, you can put treats in there. Those um, vet dog treats that we use from mm -hmm. Bill Jack that you can get at Walmart, they fit perfectly in here. You just pop them in there, and then they have to work and work and work to get those things out. So if you're going to work for eight hours and you have to leave your puppy home, you give them a toy like this that keeps them busy. It gives them something to do. So they're not just in their crate sleeping. They, they are engaged with something they can interact with. Um, the other two toys that I have here, 
These are both treat dispensers, or you can use these to feed your dog a meal in. If you think about it, when before our dogs were domesticated, they had to locate their prey, stalk it, take it down, and then they got to eat. <laughs> now we put their food in a bowl and put it on the floor. <laughs> How much work is that? Not very much. So when my puppies are little, and you can, if you have multiple dogs in the house, it's not as easy. But if you have a solo puppy, make your puppy work for one of their meals. Make them think, make them work, instead of just putting the bowl on the floor and them going, I'm done, okay? So this is um, a treat ball, and um, Omega makes this one, and you put the food in this hole, and then they roll it around, and as they roll it around, pieces will fall out of this hole one at a time. There's a big lip on the inside that keeps it from coming out too fast. So um, my Ella likes this one best. This one, and I'm not gonna say her name because she finally settled down. I think she needs to go outside. She likes this is a Kong wobbler. Um, it unscrews, and I will offer this warning with this. Poppy, you know Ruth Press mm -hmm. Poppy, our little three-legged terrier, can unscrew this. I have no idea how she does it because I can barely get it unscrewed when it's tight. I don't know oh, how wow. she does it. But it unscrews and you can put the food in there and then you tighten it down. Now, this is a large one. This is a large one and it comes in all sizes. They make little ones for small breeds and large ones, of course, for large breeds. And you put it in there and it wobbles. And as they bop it around, the food comes out. Food it's like out. those wobbler, those weeble wobbles, okay? And it's very interesting to see how a dog will play with this. Some dogs will bat it with their paws. Other ones will roll it with their nose. And again, they have to work to get the food out of here. This toy makes terrible noise on your cupboards as it hits your cupboards. Oh, I'm sure. But it has never left a mark on my cupboards. It's just very noisy. This is soft. This is a soft ball. So, how do you choose? If you have a dog that's destructive, that likes to chew things up, this would not be your choice because they could eventually chew this apart to get to the food. This one is very, very hard plastic and they cannot chew this apart as easily. I won't say never because there's always that dog that can. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I would gauge what you would buy for your dog. All well, right? let's review some things because I know we have a lot more to discuss and I think what we're probably gonna do is end up doing just another little bit of a program. But so um, where should we get the dog? At a breeder? At a breeder. Eight weeks of age. Eight weeks of age. Um, Make sure you check out the breed. Yes. Or breed breeds. If you're breeds. getting a mixed dog, check out if they say it's Husky Shepherd. Do your research on both breeds. You're getting a herding dog and a working dog. Mm -hmm. You're getting a dog that likes to keep things in a certain place and they will nip at them and circle them to get them to go there and a runner. What about dogs that are, are there some dogs that are bred more for protection? Yes. I mean, my dogs could just about care who is around my house and who comes in and out. I can't have a dog, I always tell you this, I can't have a 24-7, I can't have a dog that I've got to worry about. Can I walk in your house, probably? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can at my house too, but there are certain breeds that become very, very protective. There are breeds that are bred for that. There are breeds that are made for that, they're made to hunt or to guard. And know that. And know that. Now, can you walk into my house? Absolutely. Would I ever train one of my dogs to protect? No. It's my personal opinion that I would not ever do that because if you do it wrong, you're asking your dog to make a split decision. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're asking your dog to make a decision. Is someone hurting my person? If they're hurting my person, I must react. What if you're, and let's use a grandkid, okay? What mm -hmm. if I'm tickling my grandchild and they're 
screaming and giggling. And a dog takes that as that, that child's being mm -hmm. hurt. Their split decision. I have to fix that. Um, That's another whole discussion for a is, long time. That Children can be. However, dogs. there's this. I seriously think that my fluffy, wonderful, homeward bound, loving <laughs> goldens, if somebody what seriously came in my house and threatened me, they would step up. I have a theory about that. If you live on a road and you have dogs, I don't believe that the person, generally the person is going to rob a house or something like that. I believe that they probably check out the neighborhood ahead of time. And most burglars or most people that have that on their mind are not going, in, going to a house that has dogs. They're going to avoid you just because they don't know what your dogs will do. Right. No one knows that my four that bark crazy are Art. not going to probably do anything. Right. So I don't think you have to say, like you said, I don't have I don't to think train you my ha dogs no. for protection. I think they, That's not important. I don't think you need to train them for protection. I think if you threaten your person, most dogs will, will fix that. Uh, I mean, do. I think they just will. Most of us just want a dog that barks. Yes. And tells us that someone's and coming. And then hushes when we say hush. Or enough. Yes. That's my word, enough. Yes. So, okay, so we've got everything here. We're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, in our next program. Uh, if you have any questions concerning this or any other programs that we can do for Armstrong, give me a call at the Bark Park, and we will certainly try and do one that you would be interested in. Thank you.